I talk a lot about how much I love HTML, not specifically like an HTML file or the HTML syntax, but the power of sending static markup from the server to the client. There's a lot of times where you might want to send updated UI to the user without having to make them refresh the whole page. There's also a lot of things you probably want to do when a user clicks a button that can't be done on their computer. So you're going to need the server to be involved in those things anyways. What I've seen as a result is a lot of applications that send giant JSON payloads to the user once they've done something on the client. And then the JavaScript parses that data, transforms that into some new markup, and then renders it on the page. Often very slowly. The JavaScript necessary to do all of this stuff gets massive to the size of tens of megabytes for some websites. And the resulting performance is what you would expect. Not great. Thankfully, we're starting to see a revolution where we're moving away from these giant JSON payloads and towards sending markup to the user when it makes sense. But this isn't a new revolution. This is actually something that the HTMX team has been pushing hard for a while, all the way back when they used to be called Intercooler JS. They tried to warn us, but now we're finally hearing it. What we're talking about here is a response to a great tweet from Zeig, the CTO of Sentry, which was joking about how we got tricked into using GraphQL. While I do think GraphQL has a lot of benefits, there are negatives too, and that's the joke here, is a lot of people were using it when they shouldn't be. But these continued abstractions where you were building more and more complex API solutions so the client could get the info it needed, this became a very fast, slippery slope, and GraphQL emphasized how slippery that slope had gotten. The HTMX team replied with a link to a blog post from 2016 about this, where they tried to warn us. And for those who don't know, Intercooler was the old name for HTMX. So let's take a look at this blog post because I love it. And I think it's more relevant now than it's ever been before. The API churn to security trade-off. TLDR, heavy client-side logic requires a trade-off between API churn or an increasingly complex security model. The problem, a recent article by Jean-Jacques Debray titled Why I No Longer Use MVC Frameworks sparked a long and interesting discussion on Hacker News, which crystallized a fundamental problem I see with the current trend towards heavy client-side logic in web apps. Here is the start from that article where Jean-Jacques lays out the problem. The worst part of my job these days is designing APIs for front-end developers. The conversation inevitably goes as, Dev, so this screen has data elements X, Y, Z. Could you please create an API with the response format X, Y, Z? Me, okay. I don't even argue anymore. Projects end up with a gazillion APIs tied to screens that change often, which by design requires changes in the API. And before you know it, you end up with lots of APIs and for each API, many form factors and platform variants. To summarize, if you are designing network API endpoints for a front end, you will end up tweaking and modifying the API to support your UI needs in an ad hoc and often chaotic manner by letting something that by its nature is constantly in flux and fiddly, that is, the UI, determine the shape of your API, you end up thrashing it around trying to keep up. For the remainder of this article, I will refer to this problem as API churn. That's an important piece to remember. API churn is the enemy that we're fighting with all of this. So what's the solution? The solution is if you're committed to that client side, increase the expressiveness of the API available on the client side. Okay, so what does that mean? It means you must begin surfacing more and more generalized data access and mutation functionality on the client side. You see this with general query languages like GraphQL replacing multiple REST-ish and ad hoc API endpoints with fewer, more expressive endpoints. It's gonna be thought of as a move towards something like SQL on the client side. I don't like comparing it to SQL, but I get what they're trying to say. By increasing the expressive power of endpoints, you, the API designer, no longer need to worry about getting an API just right. Rather, the front-end developer has control over how and what is returned or what is modified, and your API stays stable as the UI needs change. Sounds great, but wait a second. There's a problem with the solution. The problem with these increasingly expressive endpoints is that you're also putting them not just in the hands of your front-end devs, but also the hands of potentially hostile users. The browser is about the least secure computing environment I can imagine. And anything that the front-end devs can do can also be done by a hostile user. Like this GraphQL query. If you don't make this really secure, you're gonna have users able to hit it and get info they probably shouldn't, like salary. This is terrifying. And a lot of GraphQL stuff wasn't set up properly. I have a video about how putting your logic in your database is terrifying. And the reason a lot of people were stuck doing things like that is because they have these generic API layers that don't know enough about the intent of how it's being used to first off, expose data correctly, but more importantly, to authenticate the user properly to make sure they should or shouldn't have access to that data. It's utter chaos. And I've seen so many code bases drowning in this particular style of mess. And oops, you had better darn well not show that information. So now you have to build context sensitive field level security. So on every query, on every field in every query, you have to work really hard to make sure your fields are properly secured. So now every single 
key being returned by your API ever has to have its own security model around it. You can see how chaotic and hard to maintain that gets really fast. As I just said, this is incredibly complicated. And when this security issue was brought up on Hacker News, the response was, it doesn't belong in the spec, it belongs in the implementation. But yes, the reference implementation, GraphQL JS, should probably be updated to demonstrate access control. At the time, the go-to example for GraphQL and web apps was GraphQL JS, and they didn't have data access control implemented in it. So people just copying the default implementation didn't have any security, which is terrifying. I literally laughed out loud when I read this. This is a major, major issue. And anyone who considers increasing client-side expressiveness as the answer to API churn needs to have a very good answer for it. I totally agree. This isn't just a security problem. There's also so many technical challenges in implementing things in this way, where it's just hard to build and maintain a generic way to get data to the client. Security is one part. Design of the schema is one part. Implementation details, libraries you're choosing, all of this stuff gets really complex really fast. But what if there was a better way? This again is about trust. The core problem again is that in putting more expressive tools in the hands of your client side devs, you are also inadvertently letting them slip into the hands of adversarial users. There is a fundamental tension, therefore, between how much you can give your developers and how much of a security headache this power will turn out to be. In an ideal world, you would give your UI developers everything they could possibly need in an open and expressive query layer, and that would let them tune the structure and return the data of a query just so for those hot, complicated queries that always end up dominating system performance. What if I told you there was a place that exists where you can do this? Such a place does exist. It's called the server side. See where we're going, guys? Don't know if you expected this, but I just tricked y'all into watching yet another server components video because this article could be summarized as the arguments for server components and or how server components replace GraphQL. They solve this problem really, really well. You see, on the server side, code is trusted. You can give your developers a completely open and flexible data access and update API because you, to a first order approximation, trust them. Give them the power of, say, a structured query language, and that's totally fine. It's not even controversial when you do that because that power isn't going to the user. It's just in the layer between the HTML the user sees and the server that has that data. When you give your front end devs the ability to generate their front ends on the server, a lot of these problems go away really fast. And it's funny that I'm bringing this up because a lot of the reason people are so hesitant with the new server component model and the new Next.js model is they think it's less secure and they don't trust front-end devs to do it right. The harsh reality is these back-end devs have gotten so good at these security models because they're a necessary evil in order to use something like GraphQL. While yes, front-end devs need to think a little bit about security now, the benefit that comes with it is they don't have to think about security anywhere near as much and we're not building these crazy chaotic systems so that you can add one additional key to your query on the client side. The solution to the problem with the solution. So if you want to avoid this API churn and security complexity trade-off, there's a great way to do it. Move things back to the server side. One way to do it without sacrificing modern web usability is to use something like Intercooler and do your HTML rendering and domain logic on the server in a trusted environment. You'll also get a lot of other benefits from this approach. Hate OS without tears, a programming model that you likely already have close to a decade of experience with, and so on. This is an old article and my audience probably doesn't have a decade of experience with things that were already old at the time, seven years ago. But that point aside, let me know if you want me to do a hate OS video because it's a pretty cool pattern. Where do they actually say what it stands for? Because I always forget. The acronym stands for hypermedia as the engine of application state. So your HTML is actually the thing that defines the state of the page. It's a really cool pattern. It's really nice seeing this being rediscovered with a new era of HTMX. If you want a long video about that, let me know in the comments. But this video isn't about that. This video is about the value of replacing your APIs with endpoints that serve HTML. The, the core point of this article is that in order to make dynamic front ends without having the server run the HTML, you now have to deal with a massive security issue, architecture issue, and utter chaos in order to increase the expressiveness so client-side developers can do the things they need to do to make good applications. This is what's so cool about this model, and this is why I think both HTMX and server components are the future of how we build full-stack applications. These security models already feel so antiquated. And the moment you start playing with either HTMX or server components, you're gonna realize just how much more complex things were than they needed to be. Yes, there are more things you need to know about, but those things are much simpler and the result is better software. So what do you think? Are we being too aggressive with the killing of APIs or should we be doing more work on the server than we are today? I'm obviously in favor of moving more of this stuff to the server. It makes everything easier and it makes front-end developers more capable of delivering great software. But how do you feel about it? Let me know in the comments and tell me if I should do that hate OAS video because it's something I wanna talk a bit more about. If you wanna learn the truth about HTMX, I'll pin a video in the corner with that. And if you've already seen that or you're not interested, the video below should be pretty good too. Thank you guys as always, appreciate y'all a ton.
Peace, nerds.